Good morning, guys. It's April 16th, and the title of today is Can You Come Down? Can you come down? And I don't know what the meaning behind this title is yet because I haven't read it. And when I do these messages, it's just straight from my heart, straight from God, what He's given me to release out to you guys and just to share the word. And that's that's how these are done. Believe it or not, these aren't planned out. But anyways, we'll be in John chapter 12. And the verse of the day is 36, which verse 36 First of it's in red, which is the words that Jesus spoke. But I'm going to be reading from verse 20 to verse 36. And the title of that is the Son of Man to be glorified. Also, I'm going to check out what it says in my New Living Translation Bible. Let's see here. Just bear with me. Jesus explains why he must die. So, the King James Version says in my, my King James Study Bible, the Son of Man to be glorified. And then, Jesus explains why he must die. So... This is in my New Living Translation. Either way, we're going to read about it. And uh, I'm going to continue us off with a prayer before I go in the Word. And will you please join me? Dear Lord, thank you for another amazing day. And I just want to lift and glorify your name again. Lord, please just give us something from the Word today. And let her souls be healed and lifted up in your name and let us just find something in there and just let this message be delivered in your name to the highest and that's that's all i want to do and do it for you lord thanks for getting this through this week getting me through this week today's friday and just asking to let it be another good day as well Jesus name I pray. Amen. Okay, you guys. All right, I'm going to start here. Verse 20. And there were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship at the feast. The same came before to Philip, which was of Bethsaida and of Galilee, and desired him, saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. Philip cometh and telleth Andrew, and again Andrew and Philip tell Jesus. And Jesus answered them, saying, So Jesus is about to say this. The hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. If any man serve me, let him follow me, and where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this cause came I unto this hour. Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven, saying, I have both glorified it, and will glorify it again. The peoples therefore that stood by and heard it said that it thundered. Others said an angel spake to him. Jesus answered and said, This voice came not because of me, but for your sakes. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. This he said, signifying what death he should die. The people answered him, We have heard out of the law that Christ abideth forever, and how sayest thou? The Son of Man must be lifted up. Who is this Son of Man? Then Jesus said unto them, Yet 
a little while is the light with you. Walk while ye have the light, lest darkness came upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whither he goeth. This is the verse of the day. While ye have light, believe in the light, and ye may be the children of light. These things spake Jesus, and departed, and did hide himself from them. So, Jesus spoke, and the Father spoke. And he said that we, the Son of Man, should be glorified. And those who loveth his life shall lose it, and those who hate his life shall live in everlasting or life eternal. You know, all these words are in red, and you know, Jesus only speaks truth. He's our Lord and our Savior. So we got to take heed to these words and really understand what he's saying and you know i can read this somebody else can read this and, or you could read this and you, it means a totally different meaning to you I, i'm just going off the context of this bible i have and uh what what they've written in it because you know there's i don't know how many people are a part of making this bible and then the study of it but they're they probably got a lot of years and their life walk with God and you know they got their career in it I'm going to take from them with my heart that it's true and that's how this goes so let's see I'm going to read what my King James Version has to say this section concludes the first major unit of John's Gospel, which narrates Jesus' mission to the Jews. The approach of some Greeks signal that Jesus' mission was approaching the climax in which he would die and thus reach all nations. His hour was now at hand. The Son of Man would surely be lifted up by men and highly exalted by God the Father. After these things, Jesus would be able to draw people to himself. Further, the Jewish nation would suffer judgment for rejecting the Messiah who had performed so many miracles among them. Greeks likely refers to Gentiles, not necessarily Grecians. They were God-fearers who came to Jerusalem to worship during Passover. On Andrew and Philip, See notes at one forty four and six five. So let's see real quick. Most likely, Andrew and Peter grew up in Bethsaida and later moved to Capernaum, located only a few miles west. Similarly. Jesus was born in Bethlehem. So it's just talking about where they're from. And then 6 5. Let's see. The crowd apparently walked several miles around the north side of the lake and caught up with Jesus and the disciples. Philip would be a natural choice for Jesus' question since he, like Andrew and Peter, was narrated by nearby Bethsaida. Jesus' question echoes Moses' query in the wilderness, Whence should I have flesh to give unto all these people? So it's he's talking about give, dying there too. Or, or dying there as well as right, you know, son of man. Gonna have he's gonna have to give his life and die on the cross. Which I mean he's not saying that, but we know that's what he had to do. On Jesus hour, following Christ involves self sacrifice shown supremely at the cross. The truth extends beyond a disciple's earthly life to his eternal destiny. So 
by living truthfully and doing what we need to do, that continues on to our everlasting life if you if you get chosen to do it. This is one of the only three times during Jesus' earthly ministry when a heavenly voice attested to his identity, his baptism, and transfiguration. Thunder was a part of God's appearance at Mount Sinai. Angels, for the angel of the Lord, spoke to Hagar, Abraham, Moses, and Elijah, and Daniel. And that was Hagar in Genesis, Abraham in Genesis, Moses, Acts 7, 38, Elijah, 2 Kings 1, 15, and Daniel, Daniel 10, 14 through, or 10, 4 through 11. You know, so, speaking to Jesus, and when these angels spoke to these guys, it happened. So, the prince of this world in its fallen sinful state of Satan is what, what, what he's talking about. Now at the cross, the devil would be cast out or decisively defeated. He talks about that in Luke 10 and Colossians 2, 14 through 15. That was Luke 18. This most explosive lifted up saying completes the earlier references in 3.14 and 8.28. Very likely the terminology echoes Isaiah 52.13. All men in the present context means all kinds of people, both Jews and Gentiles. Verse 33, on the kind of death Jesus was about to suffer. See note 2119. So let's go to 2119. The reference signifying what death he, Peter, should glorify God echoes the reference signifying what death he should die. In 1233, which is the verse, this verse therefore establishes a connection between the deaths of Jesus and Peter as God's lamb. Jesus died for the sins of the world. Peter died at a martyr's death, giving his life as a witness and the faith in Jesus. So, 19 says, This spake he, signifying by what death he should glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he saith unto him, Follow me. So, we got to follow Christ. He died for us, and we have to acknowledge his death. And by doing that, there's a certain way we have to live, and it's in love and truth, and, and it's very important. This is a final of several messianic misunderstandings featured in John's Gospel. The reference may find its basis in the patch passages. So now I'm going to go to uh, 35 and 36. Jesus' answer to their misunderstanding was indirect. He urged that they believe in the light while there was still time. When Jesus hid from them, he illustrated God's imminent judgment and completed his revelatory work to the people of Israel. So, Jesus left, but the last thing he had to say right there was, While ye have light, believe in the light, that ye may be the children of light. And I'm going to read from my, my, my utmost to his highest and see what's going on here more in depth, because I, I, I don't really remember reading this ever. So, we all have moments when we feel better than our best, and we say, I feel fit for anything. If only I could be like this always. We are not meant to be. Those moments are moments of insight which we have to live up to when we do not feel like it. Many of us are no good for this workaday world when there is no high hour. We must bring our commonplace life up to the standard revealed in the high hour. Never allow a feeling which was stirred in you in the high hour to evaporate. Don't put your mental feet on the mantelpiece and say, What a marvelous state of mind to be in. Act immediately. Do something, if only because you would rather not do it. If in a prayer meeting God has shown you something to do, don't say, I'll do it. Do it. So don't say, I'll do it. Do it. There's that, that's, that's, that's one word difference there. And Isles passed, or 
I'll do it in the future, but do it is do it right now. Take yourself by the scruff of the neck and shake it off, or shake off your incarnate laziness. Laziness is always seen in cravings for the high hour. We talk about working up to a time on the mount. We have to learn to live in the gray day according to what we saw on the mount. Don't cave in because you have been baffled once. Get at it again. Burn your bridges behind you and stand committed to God by your own act. Never revise your decisions, but see that you make your decisions in the light of the high hour. That's right. So let's live in the light. Because while we have the light, it says, Believe in the light, and ye may be the children of God. So if I'm in the light now, I'm going to believe in it and believe... You know, what's I want to know the true definition of believe. So just so I can get that out there. Which we already know what believe it means. It's a common word, you know. And I want to actually know what what it means, like the actual true meaning of what it is. So B E I'm looking here. Okay, belief. To accept the truth or reality of. So, truth or reality of. To have confidence, trust, have religious faith, to have belief in, credit, in the veracity of, think, suppose, believable, believer. All right, that's a... So, the, to accept the truth... It's pretty much the first words of that definition. To accept the truth. So to believe, we have to accept that that, that that He is the light. And then ye may be the children of light. I want to be the children of light. I believe I am a child of light. And I believe that you guys can be too. Or you might already be, I don't know. But it's in everything we do every day. We got to let our past go and start new with with Christ and that's the true glory of it that's why he died on the cross and that's why I'm sitting here today doing what I do because I want to help anybody who needs it you know and not with money okay and all this stuff if I can I will but I want to do it like spiritually I want to heal people's spirits and I want to heal, heal them where they're happy you know and they can do it on their own. And I, 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 I'm doing it on my own by reading and coming to God. And I know that you can do it too. And that's the true true light there. You know. And the only way I know how to do it is you have to get personal with God. You have to read every day. And you have to pray to Him on your own. See, I just don't pray here. I pray uh, outside of this on my own by, by myself and things like that. You know, it's, it's a relationship. And... You know, you can live in the light everywhere you go. And that, that can be your foundation. So, God bless you guys. Don't come down. So, that's the title of, of the day. Can you come down? Don't come down. Stay in that light. You know, you get in that darkness, you don't know where you're going. And I, I read it. I mean, right there it says, Lest darkness come upon you, for he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whither he goeth. So you don't know where you're going. But if you walk in the light with God, you're going to know where you're going. Because you know that God's got you where you need to go. God bless you guys. Seriously, today's Friday. It's been a long work week for most of us. Some of us have to work on the weekends. But for the ones who don't, I hope you have an amazing, blessed weekend. I'll be continuing the message on tomorrow. And uh, just give glory to His name. Jesus' name right here. Just give him that glory and praise him. All right. We're breathing. We got another good day to do what we got to do. Let's stand firm on the foundation. God bless you all. I'm out of here.